Today we're getting into the latest Tesla news, including Tesla opening their charger to all, Cybertruck hiring underway, big updates for salvaged Teslas and more, so let's get into it, and a special thanks to Raycon for sponsoring a portion of this video. First up today, Tesla is finally on track to deliver first semis this year. After announcing the semi all the way back in 2017 and giving various delays and updates over the years, Elon Musk finally announced via Twitter that Pepsi would be taking first semi deliveries this year. On October 6th, he said, excited to announce start of production of Tesla semi truck with deliveries to Pepsi on December 1st. He followed that up to say 500 mile range and super fun to drive. To note that range includes cargo. Now it's confirmed that Tesla will be holding a delivery event for this first batch of deliveries. Tesla's head of investor relations, Martin Viecha, tweeted, if you want to attend the semi-delivery event as a retail shareholder, please make sure you have a verified shareholder status on our IR website. Unverified manual submissions are eligible if the paperwork is correct. We'll be doing a random draw where one share equals one entry. This is referencing Tesla's new shareholder platform, and they will be using this to choose who goes to the semi-event. As usual, Tesla is expected to unveil final specs for the semi in a presentation and proceed with first deliveries. Most people are curious what the final miles per kilowatt hour is for the semi and what the cost is now that prices have increased across the industry. The semi should bring significant cost savings for truck drivers and hopefully we'll know the details when this event occurs. As for the final design of the semi, some renders were leaked via Tesla's app and we got confirmation for a number of things. First, we can see how the door opens. Then we appear to have the front trunk confirmed. It doesn't look too sizable, but should provide a little bit of additional out of cab storage in the semi. The renders also show what the rear of it looks like and what the final door handle shape is. Inside we see the design we've known for some time as well as the cup holders and wireless chargers. That charger is under the right screen. It's tough to see exactly but the charge port door is in these images along with the port itself and then we can see the main seat and a secondary seat. Many have noted the very large sun visor included as well. This leak also confirms that Tesla will be using their mobile app for semi drivers. Likely this will lead to commercial fleet management tools in the future. We'll hopefully get final details at the event, so I'll keep you posted on that or if Tesla will be streaming the event. Either way, it's happening on December 1st. Next up today, a small update for the Cybertruck. Production is getting closer for this truck in Texas, with a production date of mid-2023 being the last we've heard. Now Tesla has officially begun hiring for production. They posted six new jobs at the Texas Gigafactory, including Dimensional Engineer, Manufacturing Operations Leader, Senior Equipment Engineer, Dimensional engineering manager, equipment engineering manager, and senior equipment engineer robotics. These jobs all specify Cybertruck and mostly say BIW. This stands for body in white, referring to the part in production where the body is put together. As we can see from those listings, they are still looking for the leader of Cybertruck manufacturing, with the description saying, we're looking for a highly motivated leader to build world-class teams and lead Cybertruck operations at Gigafactory Texas. At the same time, Tesla is also looking for a plant director at Giga Texas, so they definitely have some pretty big jobs to fill for production. This is another good sign for Cybertruck production though. We're not just hearing Tesla talk about it being produced, we're seeing the machines arrive and the manufacturing directors being hired. Next up today, a very big update from Tesla regarding charging. Since Tesla introduced the Model S first in America, they have shipped their cars with their own proprietary connector. This connector is very good. It's small, charges fast at superchargers, locks, and has everything you need. However, at the time Tesla shipped the Model S, there was no charging standard in the US. Now Tesla ships cars with two different connectors depending on the market. There's their own connector, and then CCS2, which they ship in other countries who have picked that as a charging standard. In the US right now, there are basically only a couple chargers used by brands. Tesla uses their own handle for all speeds of charging, but then other brands, including Rivian, Ford, GM, Lucid, and every other EV on the market pretty much, uses J1772 for slower charging and CCS1 combo for fast charging. CCS1 expands on J1772, but results in a very, very large handle to deliver fast charging. It's effective, but again, it's just much larger than Tesla's connector. However, Tesla hasn't offered up their connector to other EV manufacturers until now. Tesla posted a blog post on November 11th called Opening the North American Charging Standard. In this post, they say, with more than a decade of use and 20 billion EV charging miles to its name, the Tesla charging connector is the most proven in North America, offering AC charging and up to one megawatt DC charging in one slim package. It has no moving parts, is half the size, and twice as powerful as combined charging systems, CCS connectors. To illustrate that massive size difference, they show an 
image comparing Tesla's connector and CCS. It's remarkable just how much smaller Tesla's package is. As far as the speeds they list, they confirm just how powerful this connector is. In practice, we've only seen Tesla's charge up to 250 kilowatts with this handle. That's the max speed that their cars and superchargers deliver for DC fast charging, but Elon has hinted at them delivering much faster charging in the future. It was unclear if this would require new hardware until now. According to this post, this connector can support up to one megawatt of charging speeds, and they shared many detailed documents that show every single spec of this connector. They mentioned two versions capable of operating at 500 volts and 1000 volts, and the ability to operate at 900 amps. Currently, Tesla's chargers and vehicles can't handle these speeds, but they very much future-proof this connector such that they will never have to change it as charging technology gets better and faster. Their blog post goes on to say, quote, in pursuit of our mission to accelerate the world's transition to a sustainable energy, today we are opening our EV connector design to the world. We invite charging network operators and vehicle manufacturers to put the Tesla charging connector and charge port, now called the North American Charging Standard, NACS, on their equipment and vehicles. NACS is the most common charging standard in North America. NACS vehicles outnumber CCS 2 to 1, and Tesla's supercharger network has 60% more NACS posts than all the CCS equipped networks combined. It's pretty incredible to hear those stats because all of that is true even though NACS is exclusive to Tesla's right now. As for the adoption of these connectors, Tesla mentions that some network operators are already incorporating NACS at their chargers, but also, quote, we look forward to future electric vehicles incorporating the NACS design and charging at Tesla's North American supercharging and destination charging networks. Essentially, NACS would allow customers to charge at superchargers without adapters once Tesla opens them up to other EVs. Tesla also mentions their work to get this to be a standard, saying, we are actively working with relevant standards bodies to codify Tesla's charging connector as a public standard. It will be very interesting to see this develop. Future-proofing it for faster charging is incredibly smart and should make it desirable for all companies to use in their EVs in the future. Before we go any further, I'd like to thank today's sponsor, Raycon. Raycon is a company that makes wireless earbuds, headphones, and speakers that offer premium sound. They include useful features, a comfortable fit, and up to 54 hours of battery life. I love wearing my everyday buds around the house while I'm cleaning because they fit perfectly and never fall out. With the holidays coming up, Raycons make great gifts for anyone that loves listening to music or podcasts. You also have to appreciate that they come at half the cost of other premium audio brands. Additionally, they offer 30% off when you shop their holiday bundles. It really is a very easy place to knock out your whole holiday shopping list, and they come in a range of colors to match anyone's style. While Raycons are available in-store at Walmart and Kohl's, the best deal you're going to find is in the description below. Go to buyraycon.com slash Ryan Shaw and use promo code EARLYBF for 20% off site-wide or save even bigger and get 30% off Raycon's exclusive holiday bundles. There will also be different deals coming throughout the season and I'll try to keep the description box updated with the latest offers. But just so you know, you can always go to buyraycon.com slash Ryan Shaw to get the best deals available. My only complaint here is that Tesla didn't do this sooner. There are many other EVs now shipping in North America with CCS and many charging networks fully committed to CCS. I don't think it's too late to change, especially given Tesla's massive lead on electric vehicle sales and the huge unreliability of these CCS networks, but it would have been nice for brands like Lucid or Rivian to have had this option prior to shipping first vehicles. It's twice as powerful and half the size. It's just a no-brainer for companies to use this now, especially since Tesla has opened it up entirely. Aptura was actually petitioning earlier this year for Tesla's connector to become the standard, as they planned to be one of the first automakers to use it. At the time, they said, if you agree that Tesla's charging standards are good for EVs and the US, please help. Sign this petition and encourage decision makers in Congress to adopt Tesla's charging standards and connectors as the US industry standard. With Washington DC's goal for 50% of car sales to be electric by 2030, our country needs to adopt Tesla superchargers and plug standards before another dollar is wasted on on inferior technology. At the time, they shared an image of the size difference in the connectors, and it's pretty remarkable to see here as well. They also detail how much Tesla connectors could save in reference to Tesla's supercharger install cost being one-fifth of the competition. Quote, if our country began to support Tesla's charging standards now, we could begin expanding our infrastructure at a much reduced cost, saving $4 billion on projected charging infrastructure spending through 2027. Now Tesla has opened it up to all. Now, aside from chargers and vehicles already 
adopting CCS though. Do you see any reason the Tesla connector shouldn't become the standard? Leave a comment below to let me know your thoughts. In the meantime, it's unclear how this will play out into Tesla's plan to open superchargers to all EVs in North America. For now, chargers are locked to Teslas regardless of the connector, but in the future, they do plan to at least have some of their chargers open. They plan for these to also include CCS connectors, so it may be a mess of connectors for some time until a standard is adopted. Once they do this though, they will definitely be giving up a big advantage for their cars. For those experienced with EVs of all kinds in North America, it's becoming clear that if you're someone who wants to road trip, the only EV option is a Tesla, unless you're ready for some charging adventures. Tesla's supercharger network is a huge advantage that you get only when you buy a Tesla in North America. For many customers, another brand's EVs could be a comparable option for them, but the Tesla is the only one that actually makes sense because of superchargers. Ultimately, if all cars were adopting NACS and Tesla was opening up all superchargers to any car, they would be giving up a big advantage. It's definitely the best thing for EV adoption as a whole, but may hurt Tesla long term. It will be very interesting to watch, but either way, I sure hope a charging standard ends up being the Tesla connector. One other way that Tesla is now opening up their chargers again is with salvaged vehicles. In 2020, Tesla disabled superchargers on all salvaged Tesla vehicles. At the time, their unsupported vehicle policy was updated and said supercharging and or fast charging through third-party chargers of the salvaged title vehicle is permanently disabled. They also said that Tesla reserves the right to deactivate supercharging capability on any vehicle we believe would be unsafe. If a vehicle is found to have been modified to enable supercharging and or fast charging, through third parties, Tesla may take legal action and seek compensation. That was all despite the fact that Tesla offered a high voltage safety inspection on salvaged vehicles. While it's important to ensure safety when supercharging, and there could be unknowns with salvaged vehicles, many saw this as a way for Tesla to discourage third parties from working on their cars. Instead, customers would need to buy one that hasn't been salvaged in order to use superchargers. Well, Tesla appears to be finally reversing this. They posted a document called Salvaged Titled Vehicle Fast Charging Safety inspection, and they detail the process for inspecting high voltage battery packs. The vehicle must first pass the inspection, and then after a couple of steps, Tesla will re-enable fast charging. This is reportedly being put in place for all Tesla models. Overall, this is great news. Now salvaged Teslas can be adequately repaired, pass a detailed safety inspection by Tesla, and then be allowed to supercharge safely once again. They officially have a process, and this is absolutely going along with their mission. The one question here is what repairs Tesla may charge for in order to get these cars back on the supercharger network, and we'll have to see how this develops. Next up today, Tesla is officially prepping for first deliveries of their brand new Model Y colors. These colors have been rumored for a long time now, with Elon Musk consistently touting the most advanced paint shop in the world at Giga Berlin. New colors leaked in the Tesla app last year, and then finally in late October, Tesla announced Quicksilver and Midnight Cherry Red. Those replaced the current red and silver options in their lineup for certain trims of the Model Y. The first they are delivering appears to be Quicksilver, and it looks really great in initial photos. A few photos were posted by Vision eDriver, and you can see what the new Quicksilver paint option out of Giga Berlin looks like compared to Midnight Silver Metallic. It's fairly similar, especially from a distance to Tesla's original silver color that they shipped on the Model S and 3, but it's supposed to be much more involved and detailed. Another great view is a lineup of Quicksilver Model Ys at Giga Berlin. These are lined up after production, ready for delivery, and we can see five of them in a row. I think this color looks great on the Model Y, and I'm excited to see first production models of Tesla's Midnight Cherry Red likely coming next. Long term, we could see these come out of Tesla's other factories, but right now they're only from Giga Berlin with its updated paint shop. Next up today, Reuters ran a new report this week that seemed possible but now has been brought into question. They said Tesla has considered plans for exporting made in China electric vehicles to the United States and Canada. Two people with knowledge of the planning told Reuters, a step that would connect its largest factory to North America, its largest market. Ultimately, the goal would be to sell Model Ys and 3s from Giga Shanghai in the US as early as next year. This report also claimed they're planning an initial test run of production for Q1 of 2023. In response to this report, Elon simply said, false. The assumption here is that he's saying the entire report is false and that Tesla has no plans to ship cars from China to North America, but it's possible they're still looking into the feasibility of doing this. It could help Tesla with demand in the US, but would likely disqualify those models from the EV tax credit coming in 2023. 
That's the main reason I'm questioning this report entirely, along with Elon calling it false. We'll see if anything comes of it in the future. Last up today, Tesla is in the process of canceling many solar projects across the US. In recent years, Tesla has only talked about expanding solar and solar roof installations, but now Tesla is reportedly shutting down operations in some markets. Many customers received cancellation notices saying, quote, thank you for your interest in Tesla Solar. Upon further review of your project, our team has determined that your home is in an area we no longer service. As we cannot complete your order, we have processed your cancellation. You will receive a full refund of any collected deposit within seven to 10 business days to the card on file. This includes solar panels or solar roofs, and some projects were very far in their process. According to Electric, these notices have also been in fairly populated areas, like the greater Los Angeles area, Northern California, Oregon, and Florida. This is a huge change in Tesla's strategy, as they are now referring customers to Tesla certified installers rather than planning installs themselves. It's definitely another example of poor communication from Tesla, leaving these customers back to square one after some have already been past the permit stage. We'll see how this develops, but it appears Tesla wants to focus on supplying solar installers instead of providing the install. That's all the latest Tesla news for today, so in the meantime, if you want to see my full review of the 2022 Model Y after one month, you can check that out linked up here or in the description below. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.